Hey, welcome YouTubers. Welcome to my channel, Mr. Reef Buster. I'm your host, Monty. Welcome to episode 10 of the Project Nano Reef and a continuation of episode 9, to be honest. Um, on this episode, we're going to talk about the progress so far uh, in this tank and what's coming and what the future plans are. Um, there's a couple of things that will be happening very soon uh, as far as this tank goes and as well as my main 45 gallon tank goes. So we'll talk about some of those today. Um, let's just I just want to start off by recapping from episode 9. On episode 9 I discussed that I am cooking my live rocks to get rid of the algaes. So they're still being cooked. I did a water change last week and <clears throat> excuse me, cleaned out most of the... Um, algae from them um and it's during that time that i decided um that i should i, I want to pull out the frag holder that you're seeing right now on the left side on the right side of the tank because <clears throat> originally that frag holder was covered in turf algae as well along with the rest of my live rock so uh when i was doing the water change and i cleaned everything out on uh, most of the algae from the rocks i noticed that the frag holder was really clean there was like no algae on it so and obviously, because it's not a real rock, it's just synthetic rock um, they use to build and make this uh, frag holder. So, you know, presumably, this is probably not going to have too much algae on it. So, I decided to take it out because I needed a frag holder for my frag that I'm going to be adding to this tank while the rest of the rocks are cooking. And I also want to test some a theory that I had. So, when I had to think about what caused the initial algae problem in this tank... I just I realized it could be either three things. A, my rocks bleached uh, leached uh, phosphate, which caused the algae to kind of start. And the probably the reason they they leached is because I probably did not cure them properly to begin with. I didn't spend enough time curing them, so that could be it. Or option B is um, my LEDs are causing um, this algae bloom, which is possible since I am using Chinese black box LEDs. Um, which is quite possible. And option three is my, maybe my water permitters are out of whack. Now, I've been testing my water since then, and my, <coughs> my water quality is it's good. It's not perfect, but it's good enough that it will not promote any algae growth or, you know, it's not bad to the point it's gonna it will promote turf algae growth, um, to be specific. That's good because that's what I had. Now, option two was the lights now when I before I bought this lights I did a lot of research and from the videos I've seen on YouTube from the people that used these LED Chinese black boxes I haven't I haven't run across any video of anybody using these lights and having an allergy issues because of the lights or because of the poor quality of the light spectrum that they, these boxes give out so I am kind of inclined to rule out the light issue but I wanted to test it out so that's why the frag holder is out the reason the frag holder is out because I want to give it two weeks and see two three weeks and see if any algae starts growing on it like it did before if it does then most likely it probably is the lights because my water parameters are good I do frequent water changes um, now, if the algaes do not start growing on the frag plug, frag holder like it did before, I would have to, you know, I would be able to narrow it down and, and it's just going to be the Pukani rocks that bleached, uh, that leached the phosphate out and that caused the algae bloom. And that would mean I did not cycle them properly to begin with. So either way, it's my fault. I am not blaming anyone or anything specifically. It is user fault. Um... I know I kind of, I mean when when the rocks cured uh, within a month I was kind of shocked uh, maybe it was too good to be true and it probably was so you know for those of you that are looking to start a tank give your rocks more than 30 days um, put them in a closed system no lights and let them cure for a couple of months a couple of months uh, even though you I mean even though your water testing might show that it cycled I will still give it a month just to be on the safe side you never know or you might run into issues like I have so that's that's a lesson to be learned uh, from my mistakes um, so that's that as far as the causes and as far as the LED lights goes I don't think my black box LEDs caused 
the you know the algae bloom um, there's a lot of reviews on it um, I haven't seen too many bad uh, reviews about these boxes I mean I know they're cheap and you cannot expect the same results you would from an aqua illumination or a radion uh, lights but they they do fairly well and there are plenty of uh, youtubers that are using them I've seen Fish of Hex he uses them on his um, frag system I mean he did some he did some customizations to his lights uh, to make them more safe and give a better spectrum or you know par levels I guess um, but they're still working you know and he's pretty quite successful um, now Ryan from BRS he recently did a review on these boxes um, I wish he had done it before I ordered them but to be honest even after watching Ryan's video, I still might end up getting this box. Um, on his video, the, he was comparing it to, I think he was comparing it to a Radeon, which is not a fair comparison, but even despite the fact on the individual testing, what he f noticed that these boxes are not very safe because they're prone to catching fire. There are a couple of incidents where they did catch fire very fast and you know and partly because you know they're manufactured so cheaply in china the pcb boards are not very very good they're very cheaply made so that probably causes some of the fires i have been lucky with these boxes i've had them for almost eight nine months now without any incident um so you know not going wood for that i know but you know just because i haven't had any issues doesn't mean no one else has so there's two sides to everything some people may have had bad luck with them some didn't didn't yet um regardless of the fact i would i mean this is a beginner tank um so i'm not gonna i don't i didn't want to spend three four hundred dollars on leds now will i do it in the future probably you know if my tank uh tells me that needs that type of fixture that type of light uh quality i might end up doing it so but in the beginning no, I think this was a good choice for me. Um, so moving on, as far as the corals go, as you can see right now, there's only one coral in the tank, um, which is the torch on the right side. Uh, let me zoom in a little uh, so you can see a little bit better view of him. Let me zoom in a little close. There we go. So he's doing a little bit better. Originally, I had him on the sand bed, and he was a little too happy. He wasn't opening as much. Uh, even though right now he, he's not opened as much either, but he's more open now than he was when he was in the sand bed. So it's a good thing I pulled the frag the frag holder out. You know, this way, can if I buy any more specimens, I can put them on the frag holder instead of putting them on the sand bed. Um, I have been trying to work out um, the flow in my tank because my sands keeps shifting. So I'm trying to work on that flow. Once I get everything tuned up properly, I might end up start putting corals in the sand bed. Until now, I'm just going to use the frag holder mostly. Um, as far as corals go on this tank, while we're waiting for the rocks to cure, what I'm going to be doing is fragging some of the corals that I have in my main display tank, my 45 gallon, and start putting them in this tank so they can start healing and becoming a proper specimen. So when it's time to put the rocks back on the tank and redo the aquascape, I can you know put them on the rock and call it a day so what i'm going to be bringing over for my 45 gallon tank um obviously i'm going to be fragging my zinnias um i'm going to be fragging my toadstool i'm going to be fragging my mushrooms um yeah and probably i have some polythoas in there i might frag it if they're pretty good um but and as far as placement goes i'm obviously gonna um I'm thinking about putting the zoanthids, uh, not the zoanthids, I'm sorry, the zinnias on that black uh, overflow box in the back uh, just to cover it up because they, they grow really fast and they're good at covering the wall and everything. They're good at, they grow normally on the glass. So I think it's a good idea to, you know, frag those, the, the zinnias on that black box just to cover it up to make it look nicer. Or when I, I plan on getting some uh, green star polyps, I might put the green star polyps on that black in you know, overflow box just to cover that up. Let me know in the comments below which one, which way you guys think I should go. Should I do the Xenia on the black overflow box or the um, or the green star or neither? And let me know why. 
Um, now, if I don't end up putting the green star polyps on that overflow blocks, I'm gonna put them on. Um, I'm gonna give them their own island so they can over, you know, grow it and just isolate it and doesn't don't bother the rest of the corals. Um, because just like zinnias, they they grow really fast. Um, so that's that, and and the frog spawn. I'm gonna I'm gonna frag it, and I'll show you. I'll probably do a video of me uh, doing the fragging for those of you that are interested. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see me. Um, do a video of uh, you know of me fragging my corals so for if you're interested let me know if you, if i should make that video um if enough people say yes i might end up making you know doing a video while i do the fragging um and as far as fishes go i mean i have plans um i don't want to say what I, what kind of tank livestock tank i want this to be I'm kind of torn between if I still should consider this to be a strictly clownfish tank or I should just have a mixed tank with a couple of clowns, um, some some wrasses, maybe a clown or you know pair of clowns, maybe a wrasse. Um, so let me. I'm still thinking about that. I'm still debating when that time comes. We'll cross that bridge then. Um, and as far as um, future videos go, you know, I appreciate you guys watching my channel, watching my videos. Um, I would, you know, if you, for those of you that are leaving comments, I do appreciate it. Um, the reason, you know, I started this blog or this project or this channel, for that matter, is so I can document my progress, my success, and my failures. And so this way, you guys could learn something as well from my mistakes and also from my successes however small they are and also mainly because I want to learn something from you guys because there's a lot of you guys that are that have been this hobby lap longer than I have and know a lot more so I'm here to learn as well which is very important and I appreciate all the subscribers uh, till this day and for those of you who are not subscribed you know hit the subscribe button hit the bell button if you find these videos useful or informative hit the like button um, as far as the videos go I am working on a couple of different projects um, that are in the works and I will be uploading those videos very soon mm, currently on my main 45 gallon tank I am thinking about upgrading the lights on it um, because it's getting to the point where I want to start adding more um, SPS and LPS is on that tank and the light that it has currently I don't think is, is sufficient so I might do a light upgrade on my 45 gallon tank so that will be a video uh, and uh, when I do that, I might also do a DIY project uh, for a canopy for that tank because that tank currently doesn't have a canopy. But if I do a light upgrade, I'm going to have to do a canopy. So that might be another uh, video. Um, as far as the Project Nano Reef goes, you know, I will keep you guys updated as to what's going on. Um, may maybe the next video, uh, we'll talk about a couple of different topics, but one of them is probably going to be dosing. Um, because I plan on keeping SPS on this tank and, you know, water changes are good and all, but I think dosing um, takes it over the edge a little and makes life much more easier to maintain those type of um, the special corals, uh, SPSs, and some LPSs. Um, so that might be a topic on the next episode, so stay tuned for that. Um, you know, leave a comment below if you have any suggestions or if you have any ideas that you might want to run through me. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys. Um, hopefully you guys are having great success on your tanks. And, you know, share your success stories. You know, I want to hear about it as well. Uh, if you had liked the video, hit the like button. I know there's more videos coming soon. So, happy reefing, guys. Until next time, take care. Monty out.